Um, so this past week, we saw two blasts of the past performances, Kareem Hunt and Juju. Kareem Hunt had the most rush yards he's had in a game since 2020 uh, and most receiving yards for Juju since 2021. Um, and – what I thought was hilarious, Juju almost surpassed what he had as a Patriot last year. He had 260 yards. Juju had 130 yards alone in this game, so he's already almost there to what he had his full year in New England, which is funny. Um, and then this was the most interesting stat. So after our conversation Monday night, I went back and looked. Because Pacheco never eclipsed 27 carries in the game. His most is 24. So I was like, okay, if Pacheco didn't do it, who the heck has done it since Kareem Hunt left? So I go back, and – the Kareem Hunt's 27 carries were the most carries by a Chiefs running back since December of 2017 when Kareem Hunt had 29 carries. So literally Kareem Hunt, I mean, the guy leaves for seven years, comes back, and he's the the the, the, the most fed ball carry that we've had since he left, which is just wild to me. But, J.D., who has impressed you the most? Because everyone's talking about, like, these blow performances by Juju uh, and Kareem Hunt. Is it sustainable? Um, do you think these two can kind of uh, sustain this level uh, of play? Uh, who impressed me most? I'll start with the first question first. Uh, most impressive was Kareem Hunt by by, by a long shot, uh, number one. For the simple fact that uh, without any type of training camp coming in, he was in shape and he's able to get that many carries on the second game that he's played for us. Uh, very impressive. Uh, Juju, I always knew he had it. Uh, no, I wasn't really shocked with Juju doing what he did. Uh, I knew he was, like I said, it was only 2022 20, when he caught 78 balls, almost 80 balls, Marcus, and 1,000 yards for us. 2022. Everybody, oh, like, yeah, Juju ain't the same. It, it ain't been 10 years. <laughs> what, what are y'all talking about? So I just took a, a, a cup of coffee up there in New England, came back. He got him some clam chowder, came back, they got some barbecue. That's what it was, okay? So. Everybody had to relax on Juju, man. I don't know we always said it, added in it. But Kareem Hunt, um, it's great to see uh, because sometimes you don't know as, as running backs how they're going to be, what type of toes taking on their body. Uh, I, I had to go to my nephew. My nephew actually said something on here. Let me let me address him. Nephew, it was always good to see you. As a running back going to you, where Taylor has till the end of the season to clean up his mistakes and look for better player. This is the NFL. People would love to take his position. Word. Word. Word, absolutely. That's how it is. Performance-based business, Nap. I love you. I will see you tomorrow. But absolutely, you understand that. So you got to the end of the season, man. That's how it works, okay? And after that, uh, we, can we see you? Can we talk to you? And when you hear that, things happen. Things happen. But so, Andre, going back to uh, Juju uh, and, and, and Kareem, Juju is a baller. I'm glad we got him here. It, it took, when we when we signed him, I'm like, thank God we got Juju here. He's just in case something happened. He was he was a perfect guy for us. Perfect guy for us. Uh, Kareem Hunt um, came in lean. We were talking about it. He was eating, you know, some of the the kibosh and you know uh, the cabbage up there in 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 in, in Cleveland. You know, whatever it is that they eat up there, man, and trying everything off the buffet uh, for a little bit. But now he slimmed down, came back. He's ready. He's ready to go. Uh, it's probably in the, in, the, in, the, in the cold tub. I see somebody say that. Uh, my thing is, Kareem Hunt, man, Ed Joker, uh, can he sustain that? Can he sustain it? Uh, he says he can. I believe him. I would say maybe not 27 carries next time. I like 20 and give the other guys the carries. Carson Steele, let them come in and do what he do. Uh, but I know four men in offense, we needed to ha let that happen, give him the football. Uh, but Kareem, man, has been an absolute joy to watch. He really has, man. He really has. And look, we, we watched him uh, behind Nick Chubb all those years, and it was effective. And sometimes you was like, he was so good to get behind Nick Chubb. You were like, how come nobody else assigned him as the number one back? How come? I've always wondered that. And there was times, Marcus, we were talking about the time he might have a chance to get back here 
He was like, shoot, we'll just take it. Yeah. They were like, oh, hey, everybody do that, man. They done with that. Uh. Yeah, Clark would never. Yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, build bridges. He didn't burn any. So you build those ridges back up. I'm glad they did it. Uh, and, and we decided to uh, to reconcile that relationship. Uh, and it's going to work out for both of us. Work out for the team, the Chiefs, and Kareem Hunt. So, What, what does it tell you, J.D.? Obviously, like – it's been seven years, right? And regardless of how much tread there is, I mean, like, you know, it's been seven years, right, J.D.? And the yeah. fact that we go from 2017 was the highest carry total we've had from a running back with 29. Mm-hmm. And seven years later, his second week, like you mentioned, no training camp, no nothing, pretty much off the couch, and right away we're jumping into giving him 15 carries, and then right the, the following week – we're giving him 27 carries, and it's the most we've had. What does it say about him? But what does it say about the trust that Andy Reid and the staff have in him to just go out and say, hey, 27 carries, that no, ain't no thing. We'll give, we'll give you 27 carries. Because they, they need to give Pacheco 27 carries. And that, that, to me, is like when I saw he he never had more than 24, I'm like, wait, no way. The guy's second week here, we're giving him 27 carries, more than Pacheco ever has ever gotten? It's crazy. Uh, I mean, they, we knew what we had when we got him. When, when we drafted him, we knew he was a bell cow. So that's the reason we drafted him. Um, and then, of course, like I said, kind of, uh, uh, you know, getting a little taste of what he was able to do up there at Cleveland. So I guess you just kind of make an assessment, like, what you know, do, does this guy still have it? This is only his eighth year in the league, Marcus. It's only his eighth year. Him and Juju came in at the same year. They both came in the same year. Uh, and so – we understand that the shelf life for wide receivers is better than it is for running backs. And then, you know, running back didn't have a lot of things on his legs. You know, he only had the with abdominal strain that, you know, he had to deal with when he was up there. Other than that, man, that joke is a hoss. Hey, you know, he runs, man. He, he's he's a little muscle. He, he, he runs through there, okay? And he's hard to bring down. So I think Andy and those guys trust it. If he said he can do it, hey, man, we're going to give it to you. And that, I know – when I'm sitting on the sideline and coaches asking running backs how you feel, they're like, man, I'm good. They, if you give me a thumbs up, give it to them. Running back let you know real quick. Hey, tap on the head. They're right. Now, if you're still watching, it, tell them, I said, with, tap in the helmet. Hey, I need one. I need one. So if he says he got it in him, he's talking about let me eat. Let me. I'm like, oh, man, shoot, this sucker, he's ready. He is ready. Uh, so, and I, I don't know if you saw. I, I don't know if you saw the, uh, the the conversation he had with P Ryan uh, the week before on the char- uh, against the Chargers. I did on, on the sideline. Remember, they tapped him out after he did the whole. I mean, eat. They took him out and they gave P Ryan that the rushing touchdown. He was talking to P Ryan. Uh, on the side. Yeah, yeah. He's like, he's like, he's like, he's like, I wanted that. <laughs> yeah. Well, they should have. But he was like, you know, he's happy. He's like, look, you know what? Though, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. So, yeah, that was like, word, that's it, man. Tap at the helmet, you know, to come out. God. He was ready to go. I thought there was going to be his moment, and it should have been. But that's okay. But I'm glad he, he he's he's comfortable enough to be like, you know what, I'm I'm, I'm happy. We got it. P. Ron got it, though, too. So that's one thing the Chiefs have here. I think it's part of the culture is not having selfish players, Okay. And everybody's got to play their role. Everybody's got to be part of this whole machine working together to get better, right? And so if there's some part of the moving parts are not doing as well, everybody picks up the slack. And so our offense, part of the moving part, wasn't doing as well, the defense picks up the slack. And so we start seeing it. Same thing. Two great receivers go down. We don't have them coming in. Guess what? The rest of the guys pick up the slack. Uh, and so this is what it's supposed to be. That's how our family does. This is how championship teams do, uh, and this is who their MO is. So um, I said this before. If, if 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 guys are not happy, they will jump ship. They're not winning championships. They will jump ship. And so uh, I'm glad Juju jumped back on this ship. Come on, baby. Go, 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 go. Yes. That's a first down. That's a first down. That's a first down. This football season, I'll be putting down normal sodas like Coca-Cola for Olipop. Olipop offers a healthier alternative with its low sugar content and natural ingredients. Olipop is more than just a drink. It's a wellness companion that supports your digestive health. 
Packed with prebiotics, this fizzy elixir helps promote good bacteria in your gut, leading to improved digestion and overall well-being. So go ahead, click the link in the description and use promo code SODALOVE and get your can of Olipop so you can enjoy the game guilt-free. Go Chiefs. Use the promo code SODALOVE for 15% off now. Kareem Hunt, man, the guy came out dominating on a Monday. Ooh, Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt, man. Listen, uh, Kareem Hunt was spectacular uh, just running the football, and he was running with a lot of uh, conviction, running behind his pads. He was getting skinny in the hole, the little jump cuts and getting through for the extra yards. And like you said, Marcus, he was just falling forward for a yard. He, he just wasn't stopping him from doing what he wanted to do. Uh, and it was good because he didn't look like he was tired. You could have gave him the ball all game, and he seemed like he'd have been fine with it. Um, but it, with his play, what he's just shown uh, has increased the uh, productivity of our offense uh, uh, significantly. Not only that, but it's also opened up a lot of things as far as like in the passing passing game. Um, there's a lot more things you can do. You can throw the ball to him in the backfield. He, he caught the one little swing pass, uh, which was great. He was going to try to get him one in the screen. Uh, he's a workhorse, uh, and we got to utilize him, man. He did a tremendous job. Gave it to Carson Steele. Carson Steele did a great job uh, running up and down the field, running behind his pads. I know everybody was saying about the one that was kind of like a, you know, a handoff. We shouldn't have, you know, I think the guy was just trying to do what he was asked to do. And to be honest, which we shouldn't let him go in as tight ends. Travis shouldn't have got him, let him get around for the guy to be in the play. So uh, for me, uh, I gave our running backs, man. I gave my eight. P. Ryan came in and did his, his thing, too. So those guys look good together, the way that they was able to just come in uh, and just kind of feed off of one another. And that, that running back room looked like it did last year when you had the guys celebrating one another, them being happy for each other. Uh, but if, if this is any indication how it's going to look for the rest of the year, and then you talk about getting Pacheco back, man, we're going to be a hard team to stop, you know. And, and he just came at the right moment when we needed him. Uh, when we started, you know, losing wide receivers. And so an uh, eight for those guys. Yeah, and it also tells you, too, like, it, I mean, I know we, there's all ligament damage for his injury, but if there was any setbacks, it's like, okay, like, you know, Pacheco, take your time. Like, they, 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 take as long as you want because we got a guy who's come in and has looked, I mean, you can make the argument he's, look, he look, he's looked better than Pacheco, but, like, you can, make the, you can make the argument. I'm not saying he is better than Pacheco. I'm just saying you can make the argument that, you know, he fits his offense even better uh, than Pop. Um, and he, yeah, he's looked phenomenal. Like, like we said on the post game show, he said that, you know, he's going to shock the world with how much he hasn't lost a step. And it really, I mean, it, it really looks like he hasn't missed a beat. I mean, he may not be as fast uh, as he was, but he still has that person explosion, JD. It, no, he does. And, and, and to be honest with you, I think, you know, him and Pacheco, it's hard to, to, because they have, have two different games that they run and how they do things. Um, Hunt definitely has a lot more vision. He's got a lot more experience. He's been in this offense doing things a little bit differently. He knows how to run the, the zone and stretch, and he knows how to do all those things really well. Uh, and so this is his baby. This is when he, he came in. This is exactly uh, what our offense was supposed to be like. And so we haven't actually had a guy uh, like him until Isaiah Pacheco uh, came here and was able to do the things he was able to do. We've seen him start giving a little bit more of the load. Before then, we were just, uh, you know, maybe giving 10, 15 carries. You know, we started increasing it because we still wanted to pass the football. But with Kareem Hunt there, here, uh, we could we could just hand that, that ball off, man, and let him tote it. Let him tote the rock. Let him tote the rock, man. And let the boys up front, let them jokers eat. Let them jokers eat. So, yeah. And you also saw, like, a, a little bit more of, like, the under center play actions, which, like, in this offense, we don't really see that that often, like the under center play action play. Like, I mean, because Kareem Hunt was running so effectively and like you know getting five yards a, 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 a pop, it was like whoa, like we're actually running some like some play, PA rollouts. I mean, like I I, I I don't see it often in this offense the the PA rollout with uh, with Pat. So I mean, I thought that was, I thought it was pretty cool to see how effective we run the ball that we actually were able to, to throw some of that in in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the thing is. It didn't work down on the on the on the goal line, and I think on the rounds did that play that tipped off Juju's hands. Remind you of when the Seahawks didn't run the ball, the Patriots intercepted the ball in the end zone. 
I said the exact same thing. I said it was the exact same play, uh, and I put it out there on Twitter, uh, Amber Brown. It looked exactly the same. Uh, the difference in that was eh, Pat threw it a little bit behind you. Drew. I mean, that's a, that's a fastball. And so a player is expecting it right here when you catch it. That's exactly where Juju's expecting it, right here, right in front of him, where he can put his hands out and, and, and actually receive the ball. Like when it's a little bit behind you, you got to you, – and I think Juju was about to make the catch and pull it in. And the DB hit him. He hit him. And 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 that's what helped dislodge the ball going to Kalen's hands. And that sucker take off running down the field, man. I I, I could have watched that to him just running all day long, just rumbling and t- down the field, man. Yeah, big fella got some wheels on him. No doubt about it. Uh, but that play in itself, uh, can you say uh, – is there little things you could talk about Maybe if Worthy rubs a little bit better on that, is that DB there? Possibly not. You don't know. Uh, it, does Juju take the take it up a little bit more? But I know it is just it's a it's a it's a slice route. It's just it's right right there. That's exactly how it's supposed to be ran. Could you take a step forward and then go? Possibly, but I think this is like it's a straight rub. Like it's it's immediately coming right now. So you can't take a step and go. You got to go right now. So. Uh, Danny Eggers, yes, JD, that interception was mostly pass fault, but Juju could have made that catch. Well, he, he had it on his hands, and the DB just made a good play. You know, he dislodged it. And so I think if the DB's not dislodged it, he's pulling it on in. So, yeah, uh, I think with the way Hall was running, I mean, I, you, you at least pound that thing tw- two times with Hunt. The Hunt should have at least had two to three touchdowns in that game on Monday. Yeah, if, if, we, if we hand it off from the two, then we're not even talking about this thing, yeah. you know, which we should have probably done. Mm-hmm. You know, but you know, hey, you know, they, they wanted to try it and we've seen the results. So yeah. I love that coming out second half. We just start running the football. I'm like, I love that mindset. I love it because it softens up defenses, but also it too opens up the middle for guys. Now they have to worry about the run. They have to worry about stopping Kareem Hunt. Mm-hmm. They have to worry about Carson Steel coming in and making a couple of, 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 of runs, you know, still hard runs. And I love it, man, because some jokes back there, man, are a load. They are a load. And Korean Hunt, man, able to like that little jump through and skip and turn his body and get skinny. I mean, we haven't seen that. It's just two different running styles. And I said this last week between him and Pacheco. It really is. And Kareem Hunt is a true bell cow, you know, when he's running the football. So, yeah, let's 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 continue to talk about uh, Kareem Hunt. So, uh, 27 carries, and we talked about right before we got on. Uh, the 27 carries Kareem Hunt had tonight – uh, would it be Pacheco's career high? Pacheco's never had more than 24 carries in a game before. So it's just, it tells you the trust this coaching staff has in Kareem Hunt. The guy who was off, you know, he was off for a, a year. They bring him back 14 carries on a game he wasn't supposed to have, he barely play last week. And then a week later, when he's dealing with a apparent shoulder injury, which obviously is probably just more, you know, a little dinged up after not, not playing ball for a year, 27 carries. And I think he had two, three catches on top of that. A 27 for 102, and then uh, looking at this, Kareem Hunt's 102 rushing yards are his most in a game since 2020 uh, with the Browns. That was 1,422 days ago. So, talk about throwback games for Juju. Another throwback game for Kareem Hunt tonight. And uh, quite frankly, when he said a couple weeks ago that he hasn't lost a step, he's the same guy he was in 2018, I thought that was, you know, what's a guy supposed to say about themselves? But... I don't know. I think at this point, I got to take him as a word because this defense we played against, that's no joke defense. I know Barkley ate them up, but outside of Barkley, no one had more than 60 yards against them on the ground. And then and this guy comes off for not doing anything for a year. It comes in and goes 27 for 102 against them. I mean, Kareem Hunt, he looks like the guy that we that let go seven years ago. Yeah, that, shoot. And, and the thing is, it was probably good because Nick Chubb, Nick Chubb was a guy that was getting all the runs, and, and and so he didn't have a whole lot of mileage on his on on his legs like that. And the same thing, he had a chance to get healthy. He looks a lot better. He looks like he's in shape. And I think Tasia said this a couple of weeks ago. That sucker looked like when he was up in uh, in Cleveland, looked like he was eating a whole lot of the the calzones and whatnot. <laughs> you know, so uh, he that joke could thin down a little bit. So I don't know if he was thinking about getting some of that barbecue in him so he could gain a little weight, or he felt like now is the time I could come in and just uh, uh, 
show what I can do uh, like I did before. So you get a lot of corned beef on rye up there in Cleveland. Oh my huh? gosh, yes, he is. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I want a bit of that. Uh, I tried some of that right there too. What, what do you call that right there? I, I, I take a little bit of a spoon of those things. So Cleveland known for the Polish boy. The glorious, messy marriage of kielbasa, coleslaw, french fries, and barbecue sauce. Damn. Uh, That'll make you gain weight. That'll make you gain weight real fast. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he looked great. Well, it was actually pretty funny. You know, there wasn't a double-digit run in this entire game by either team. Yeah, it was grinded out five, four or five-yard runs, man. Nine was the highest run. Uh, that's... Um, very, very Pacheco like game actually. Uh, 27, 102, and eight, eight was his long Kareem Hunt's long, uh, <laughs> like just couldn't get past that second level, huh? Um, but that's it, it was a it was a uh Pacheco game, and like we constantly had like a lot of third and shorts. It was like four yards, three yards, four yards, five yards. So it was always like a third and manageable, it was always like a third and three or third and two. I'd love to go over the numbers to see how many third and shorts we had. Um, I wish our third down numbers were better than that, but you know, it's, it's okay. I think we're like 42% today. Um, but uh, he did exactly what we needed. And, and that's the kind of um, identity we need to have, right? Just manageable third downs, move the chains, ball control, 40 minutes to 20 minutes. I mean, team can't score if they don't have the ball. Right. right? Um, all we need to do is just kind of give them the ball more in the red zone. It's funny too, because, that's that was his strength in Cleveland was scoring in the red zone, and we didn't give him the ball in that one series uh, down there by the five where he should have and he would have gotten in probably. Um, oh, yeah. And then we threw a pick instead. So that's the one thing. Um, uh, let him eat closer to the red zone. Let him score, and uh, we would have beat him by what? Uh, it would have been like a thirty or thirty-three to twenty-three. Um, but he looked great, and. Um, it's interesting how we're giving him so many carries so early on. It just shows the trust we have in him, and we know that he's built for this. Second and two on the on the two yard line. Ah, how about we trickle? Yeah, let's do that. How about we trickle? Let's throw the uh, the little old underneath slant route. Sneak I route. like the Kelsey play. If you look at it going in from our view, he should have had that. I can't believe he didn't. He, he thought he could just, like, muscle through and power through and get in over Saunders in that play. Saunders Colin, is a great play on that one. Colin Saunders had been playing against the Chiefs for a number of years. He's seen that play over and over again. I guarantee he was telling defense. You watch how he swims the defender, the defender or the offensive lineman. He swims to get over top of him, and he's just right there on, on, on Travis Kelsey. And I'm sitting there thinking, man, this sucker's going to see this plenty of times before. He's done let them know. Watch the uh, the shovel pass. Watch it, you know, because it, it it was it looked it looked great. It was, it was there. I was, was like, there. Oh, I needed yeah. that for fantasy too. I'd roll my game for that. For that, but I was <laughs> devastated by that. So I was like, "Come on, man! That that play was well drawn up." It's like he made the play there. If he didn't make that play, that was scoring. But after that, run the ball, run the ball. The next one, but absolutely, yeah, yeah. I, I just. uh Oh man, the, the the whole trick like you don't have to trick them. You don't have to do that. Like do it on third down if you want to try that. If you, you know third, if you want, heck, you right there at the two yard line. Like you should try. It's it should four down territory. I'm thinking four down territory. And look, as as a guy that you know took pride in blocking, I know the linemen are thinking the same thing. Like you got to run the football down there. Let us go man on man hit him dead in the mouth, come off the football, and and score with our man. Like, it, there's a pride factor for guys that block, linemen in particular, that when you do throw the ball on that, it's like, what are we doing? Why are we, why are we throwing the football? See what happens? It's, it's intercepted. It's intercepted. And so I get, you know, being clever, you know, trying to play chess, but then all of a sudden you start playing against yourself. And it's like, wait a minute, what are we doing? Like, there, there's no reason for that. And that's what you were talking about as far as taking points off the board. But we should be, we should have whipped this team by three or four touchdowns. Easy, easy, easy. Turnovers, penalties. I mean, taking us out of field position, it's crazy. 
Juwan Taylor, the, you know, the, the holding call, took a, took a touchdown off the board. And he was pissed. He should have been. Hey, you know, it's like, hey, he's looking around like, oh, I hope that, man, the heck he had him by his neck. Come on, man. Like, you, you, you got to do better than that. You got to do better than that. So, oh, man. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts.